Big Al Aceves was the warlord of a motorcycle gang called the Mongols. Violence pumped through his veins like blood, and no one dared to mess with him until one day Big Al met his match. Alfonso Aceves was only a teenager, and he was addicted to violence. When I was already like 18, 19, I, I was committing crimes, selling drugs. You know, it was like excitement. You wanted to do it. You had to do it. And then when you did it, you were glad you did it, even if you came out hurt. And then all of a sudden, the Vietnam War came. I wanted to go because they were going to be paying me for killing people. I was finally going to get money for something that I've always wanted to do. Al served two tours in Vietnam as a member of the 101st Airborne. When his time was up, he returned home. I thought to myself, what am I going to do? And I was coming home on the plane, and I said, man, I'll, I'll, I'll go to college, try to change my life. That didn't happen. After several run-ins with the law, he and some friends started a motorcycle club called the Mongols. When we started the Mongols, there was 10 of us. And everywhere we went, somebody would want to test us, and we'd fight. And little by little, we started growing, growing more chapters, until I was getting kind of like famous in there for all the fights I had, all the things I would do to people. Big Al was a, a sergeant at arms. Uh, he was what I call a warlord. And whenever we needed something taken care of, uh, Al was the guy that we looked to. We thought we were living a dream, all these things we were doing. Everybody was so afraid they would never say anything. So I picked up the gun. You got the money? And I ended up going and doing things for other people that if you owed money, I'd go collect. Al made countless enemies and eventually became addicted to heroin. Even so, he married Lorraine. Then I had six kids, and he married me with these six kids. And he said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of the kids. I'll support you. Everything will be all right. Al's addiction grew worse. He needed money for drugs, so he started taking on bigger jobs. I needed drugs, so I needed to do things. And that's when we, like, I would take whatever I would get. They would say, could you bomb this place? And I'd give them a prize. And I was always worried, always fearful that he'd get in trouble or die or because he'd go all over, Mexico, everywhere. And I used to say, oh, is he going to come home? Or they're going to give me a phone call and he's dead. When the money ran out, Al and his family needed a place to stay. So a family took them into their home, but they had one stipulation. He says, uh, there's only one thing. He says, we're going to read a scripture every day when I come home. I didn't know what a scripture was. As Al reluctantly read the Bible, his curiosity began to grow. One day he brings another guy, and then the guy started talking to me about salvation. He says, you know, wouldn't you like to be saved? Wouldn't you like your sins to be forgiven? And I looked at him, I told him, man, you don't know who you're talking to. You know what I mean, the things I've done. And he told me, no, God died on the cross for you. And so I accepted the Lord, and I was still hooked. But turning his life around wasn't so easy. He was eventually locked up for planning a bomb attack. When he came out, we went to meet him at the airport, my family and I, and I was scared, fearful. I didn't know which way he was going to go. And when he came home, it was a little rough at first, but he just said, we're going to church, we're going back to church. I don't want to leave God anymore. I want to stay with him. Al moved into a Christian men's home and kicked his drug habit. I was kicking heroin. God was so good that he gave me the strength to stay because I wanted to run. But when I started falling down on the ground having convulsions, God was good. He just, I stayed, I kicked. Eventually, Al started working at the men's home. Everyone around him noticed a change, especially Andy his friend from the Mongol days. Andy, too, became a Christian. That's been the uh, awesome thing to see, that uh, the transformation, because he was always, to me, was a big, rugged, hardcore guy. And now, uh, the tone of his voice has changed. 
Uh, he's a very, a very compassionate person, uh, very sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to the needs of people. I'm proud of the strength in him that he stood. He stood up and said, I'll follow you, Lord. Oh, I know it was hard because of his background and all that he's been through. And then, you know, being a dad, raising my kids, I'm proud of him. Death called on me a lot. People have tried to kill me forever. But God had a plan in my life. No matter what kind of biker you are, no matter what club you're in, no matter what situation you're in, God can take you out of it. My life has changed just because of Christ, not because of any drug, not because of any program, no doctor, no psychiatrist. God has changed my life completely from the person I was to who I am now. He's changed my life completely. There was a killer. <clears throat> Big Al was a killer. He was a murdering killer, and he loved to do it. But God changed his heart. And the Bible says if anybody is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. Big Al is a new creature in Christ. His sins are past. They're covered by the blood of Jesus. So some of you in the audience right now, you're saying, well, I didn't do anything that bad. I didn't do anything that bad. Well, whatever sins we've committed, a little one or a big one, it all offends the majesty of God. And yet God will forgive you for the big ones or for the little ones. Whatever you think you've done, God Almighty says, come home, child. I love you. I love you. I'll pick you up. I love you. If you want to know him today, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died for you. He loves you. Pray these words. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, that's right, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I love you, Lord. I love you today. I love you because you love me. And right now, I open my heart to you, and I say, Jesus, please come into my heart. I give you my life. All the sin and the roughness and the harshness that's been there, all the things that have been done to me and all the hurts, I give them all to you, Lord. And I take from you your salvation and your blessing for me. Take over my life, Lord, from this moment on. <clears throat> you are mine and I am yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.